soon as you, as any sort of foundation in your house officer, come into the system, you have a good chance of progressing into the rest of your SHO training or the core training, as they call it now, and registrar training to consult in here. So I'm going to take a little bit of time to tell you about the conventional training, the academic training. I have a vested interest in that. And just a little bit about how the system is and what your role would be as an F1 in the system at the moment. I can, I can speak very clearly about that. I can tell you that much. So foundation year training structure. It's six four-month rotations in one or two trusts. And the trusts are divided by deaneries in the UK. I'm sure you're already aware. How many of you guys are preclinical students? Show of hands. Good show. And uh, clinical students currently in full-time clinical. Which is about half and half of that. Perfect. Um, so you guys will be aware that it's divided into deaneries, and you apply nationally to different deaneries, and you do six four-month rotations in a specific area. You can be at different hospitals depending on your jobs. And it's really designed to give you procedural, theoretical, ethical, and academic all-round training in basic core medical skills that you would be expected to have, no matter which specialty you elected to go into thereafter. Um, the training is balanced. You have to have a medical uh, rotation, sorry surgeons, and you have to have a surgical rotation, sorry everyone else. Um, <laughs> but the nice thing is, apart from those constraints, you can pick virtually anything else that the region has to offer you. There is a diversity of different posts that you can have as a foundation year or an academic foundation year. All of the medical rotations are typical cardio, respiratory, acute, Jerry's if you're so interested. Um, and, and the rest of them as well, including ophthalmology for some of the uh, foundation year two doctors, if any of you should be so inclined. There are acute rotations, there are oncology rotations, there is the whole panoply of surgical rotations, including some of the subspecialist surgical um, disciplines, such as cardiothoracics, maxillofacial, plastics, the ones you wouldn't expect really to have an F1 and F2, but someone has to do the paperwork, so you know. They have to get something in there. Something but it is good exposure, and there's obstetrics and gynecology, pediatrics, GP, public health, psychiatry. There are a vast number of training opportunities, and you do get good training in them as well. Have I missed anyone's specialties? Is anyone wanting to go into anything that I've completely missed here? Oh, sorry. Well, <laughs> there are there are there are F2 posts in infectious diseases. They are quite rare because there are a small number of doctors, but there are some in the country as well. To the best of my knowledge. That's a good shame, I only missed one. Right, and what you'll be doing, I think I'll stress that the foundation year training, a lot of people start to think towards the end of the training, there are any final years here. You probably don't think, God, I'm going to be a paper boy, I'm going to be doing TTOs for the rest of my life as an F1. That is not true. The bulk of what you will be doing is you'll be on the front line, you'll be the people who are in, in, in the wards, in the hospital, holding the leaves, and you will be in charge quite a bit for the acute management of sick and unstable patients. So that is a key component. Actually, you'll be one of the key people who highlights this, does the initial management, much like Dr. Lockie was saying, you know, do you get the low molecular heparin first? You know, do you think about thrombolysis? What do you do when this person in front of you is having ACS? You guys will be the eyes and ears who will pick this up and start the treatment. So that's something to remember for everyone. Day-to-day um, -day decision making, ward rounds, clerking, initial investigations, a lot of sort of bits on take for surgery and medicine especially. You do get to do minor, minor surgical procedures. I, I, I've drained a few abscesses, did a couple of appendicectomies, and I do not even want to be a surgeon. So for those who are much more surgically minded, they were doing wrong medical students, and I'm sure there are a few of you out there. Um, you'll be assisting in major procedures. You do sort of chest drains. You can do anything you put your mind to. If you're proactive enough and you seek that training, the foundation program here does have all of those opportunities for you. There's a lot of communication. Your consultants are going to be very busy. They're going to have hundreds of patients, and it's going to be virtually impossible to find them. You'll be the people who will be sitting there talking to the talking to people about the treatment, answering their questions, explaining to them what happens next, reassuring them, celebrating, or commiserating with them. You will be those people at the front line. And more importantly, after you come out of the shambles of sort of two years of foundation training, you'll be coming to applications for higher specialty training. I don't have very much to say about the National Foundation. The final years probably already know how painful the national applications are, I'm sure. And the final years probably also already have a good idea of what it involves. But a lot of things, as, as with a lot of things, if you start something, you end up getting put into the system. And actually, one of the things that I want to stress about the, the system in the UK as it stands for training is that it has a diverse number of ways you can get to the same as well as being highly flexible in the way that you can do something. So, 
typically people will enter sort of F1 and F2 or an academic F1 and F2, which I'll, I'll elaborate on later. You come to this, you'll, you'll, head, you'll leave medical school, you do your two years as a paid lawyer or otherwise, um, and then you'll run into core training. And there are core training programs for each different sort of discipline. Emergency medicine, acute medicine, general medicine, surgery, there are anesthetics, there's pediatrics, some of, some of the other ones are running through, but a lot of them have for one and two training. And then you become a registrar in that specialty or another specialty. And then you become a consultant. That is the linear training that you do get in the UK. It's very nice, it's very organized, it, it has its problems, as does everything. But it is, what, it is something where you do get documented, organized, and fairly guaranteed training, despite what some people may say. There are other ways to skin a cat. There are some run-through training specialties, such as obstetrics and gynecology and pediatrics, where if you are so convinced, and certainly as well, to a greater or lesser extent, and progressives, where if you are so convinced after the end of F1 that you should decide that, hey, do you know what, I want to be a pediatrician for the rest of my life, or, or, or otherwise, you can enter a run-through specialty training program that protects your training for eight years and guarantees you that training to a consultant's post. It's not just grabbing SHO posts out there thinking, how am I going to prove I can be a pediatrician, surgeon, and intensivist like I want to be? Um, it is something where they say, you're going down this route. It's not, it's not yet the road, you can change at any time, but it gives you that security <coughs> and that organization to be able to say, I, in eight years, if I do everything correctly, will become a cardiothoracic or an intensive consultant or whatever you want to do. And then there are those people who will want to do research. I'm very sorry for them. Anyone in the audience who wants to do any form of academic research at all? Any academics? No? Well, that's about the proportion nationally, so that's fine. <laughs> there is a dedicated academic training program that runs in parallel to this and allows you to achieve, in the same amount of time, all of the competencies that one would expect a consultant or a senior registrar to have but allows you protected research time. I can tell you when I hit that one, I thought, you know what, it's going to be great. I'm going to do audits, I'm going to do you know, research, I'm going to write this post-it. No. no. You get home at 7 in the evening and you are knackered. And protected research time is very important for those who want to do clinical research, more for those who want to do basic research. Having three months out, I'm currently on a, on a, on a four-month academic rotation, allows you to undertake projects which can work towards a PhD, a higher degree, or a postdoctoral fellowship. And I'll explain a little bit about that later, but it runs entirely in parallel with this. You can dip into the academic program if you apply for an academic clinical fellowship. You can dip back out of it if you decide to not about game over. You can go to the Bahamas for three months. It's it's well it's NIH funded, so you might not even get away with that. But it's very flexible and you can get that protected time. GPs, if anyone's so inclined, anyone? Okay. Um, that's a bit of a shame actually. GPs have a separate training program, which is two plus three years, and you can go into that as well, and it ends you as a GP in five years' time. And there's a lot of out-of-program training opportunities, Masters of Science, PhDs, you can do junior and senior clinical fellowships. It is a very flexible program, but having some organization to it. And academic programs, they're designed to get you research to do a PhD, or get you research towards a clinical postdoctoral fellowship, if you have a PhD already. You get either 16% protected time for research in the AFP, so it's one of your six rotations. Um, and either you have a day a week or you have a four-month block in the middle. But they're different between things. And there are over 105 posts in London alone. And actually, there are a lot of academic posts which are up for grabs if you should so choose. There's the Academic Clinical Fellowship, which I've accepted, and that's three months out of every year. This carries National Institute of Health and Research funding and is a run-through program that guarantees you the rest of your specialty training as well. It's very attractive. Um, and academic clinical lectures and so on, and then the kind of boundaries blur a little bit because you do more research, you do more medicine. But there are academic prospects for the one of you who want to do academic. Correct. There are a couple of very small caveats to finish off, um, and I don't feel I can, I, I can responsibly tell you about the joys of the program. It is a great program, it is a great training program in the UK that we have at the moment. But it is always changing, somewhat arbitrarily. And the things that you enter sometimes may change over, 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 over a specific period of time. When the modernizing medical careers came out, they overturned a lot of different posts that people had as SHOs, etc. And they made it very difficult for them to then get run through training into consulting jobs. In certain instances, I'm sure you guys have all heard about the contract, and if you haven't, it's a bit of a shame. Um, there, there's, there's the issues about pay, erratic rotas, poorer safeguards, and, and, and actually we will be stretched quite a bit, and that will affect training and teaching. 
Um, I'm not going to take a side of the issue because this should be impartial, but I do encourage you to just keep up to date as to what is happening at the moment in this arena because it is quite a volatile and evolving arena. Funding is scarce for the academics and teaching is protected, but not always protected. You do get it, but only if you go, only if you go after it. There's membership examinations, there's a lot of red tape. There are problems with every system, but I, and, and I would feel irresponsible not telling you about those, given that I'm telling you about the foundation of that. But I can still wholeheartedly recommend it to you, and I hope that many of you stay around with us.